all of these truths. And then the baby spends the rest of its life remembering, remembering what it knew once before. So this is when we help this baby start to remember. The history of our people begins with Avram and Sarai, our original ancestors. When they begin, when they receive new names, right? The Torah describes God telling Avram, "Ani hine b'riti itach v'hayita la'av hamon goyim v'lo kara od et shimcha Avram v'haya shimcha Avraham ki av hamon goyim netaticha." God tells Avram. Here's what I say. This is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations, and you shall no longer be called Avram, but your name shall be Avraham, which means I've made you the father of many nations. And then God continues, Sari, ishtecha lo tikra et shema Sarai, Sarai ki Sara shema. Uberachti ota v'gam natati mimena lecha, Ben uverachtiha v'hayita legoyim malche amim mimena yihyu. And as for your wife, Sare, her name shall be Sarah, and I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations as well. You see, the first half of becoming part of Israel is symbolized by taking a new name. Not just any name, but a name that describes your task on this earth. Avram becomes Avraham, which means father of nations, and Sarai becomes Sarah, which means the one who births nations. And then the Torah continues with the other part of this transition, by Yomer Elohim el Avraham, ba'ata hineveriti tishmor hot. Ata v'zaracha acharecha ledorotam, zot briti asher tishmeru v'ini v'enchem u'vein zaracha Every male among you shall be circumcised. You shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and that shall be the sign of the covenant between me and you. Every male among you shall be circumcised at the age of eight days. Now you see, the name came first, right? That's the, and then messing with your body, that comes second, right? <laughs> but nevertheless... Nevertheless, for well over 3,000 years, we Jews have had a special welcoming ceremony for boy babies. But when a boy baby is born, we get to have a special Brit Milah ceremony and the ritual circumcision, which brings him into the people of Israel. And the Brit ceremony is the oldest Jewish life cycle ritual that we have. But our tradition never created a similar ritual in which to celebrate the entrance of our daughters. Yeah, you know, we had Malia in the synagogue shortly after a girl's birth, but little girls didn't get all the celebration stuff um, to welcome them that the boys got. They didn't have a separate special ceremony to welcome their birth. And those of us who came of age about 40 years ago started a process. We put a lot of energy into rebalancing. There's my teleprompter there. We put a lot of energy into rebalancing the roles of men and women uh, within our Jewish ritual life. And that process is still going on. You know, we've made a lot of progress. You know, like, for example, you know, women rabbis are so common now that it's almost hard to remember a time when they weren't so noteworthy. 30 years ago, but it wasn't always that way. 30 years ago, when Jesse was born, Wendy and I thought it was very important that we do something to make our own minor rabbinic statement about this process. So we tuned in some others that were working, that were doing stuff in this process, and with a little help with from pre-internet Jewish networking and publications, we put together a naming ceremony. And in its day, it was new and unusual and experimental. By now, baby naming has become a newest life cycle major ceremony event alongside Brit Milah, the oldest. So now we have 
special joy of celebrating the birth of a granddaughter.